the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Gracious God, loving Lord Jesus, you have promised us that you will be with us always till the end of times. That was a nourishing fact for the apostles and for us also today in the entire church and in the world. And your presence is continuously felt, experienced, particularly in the sacrament of this Eucharist. You are truly present, nourishing us, enlightening us and coming into us in the matter of food. Lord Jesus, during this reflection, we like to reflect and pray how Eucharist helps us to be truly Christian. We ask you the assistance of your Holy Spirit so that we enter into this Eucharistic mystery in a faithful manner. This we ask, trusting in the power of the name of Jesus. Amen. My dear sisters and brothers, in the Gospel of John, chapter 6, 35, we read, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Again, in the same Gospel, chapter 6, verses 52 to 59, Jesus speaks of his flesh as the food from heaven. The ancestors ate the manna in the desert and they died. But he who eats of this bread will never die and will have the eternal life. This is the basic fact about Eucharist as the bread of life and the presence of life-giving Jesus in the Eucharist. In this reflection, we shall limit ourselves to participation in the Eucharist, namely the Mass, as we call it, and the reception of Holy Communion, which is the body and blood of Christ. The celebration of the Eucharist has become the hallmark of Catholic Christianity. Up to the 16th century Reformation, there was never a Christian gathering without the breaking of the bread. But from the Reformation time onwards, the Protestant Christians gave importance to breaking the word rather than breaking the bread. Also striking is the absence of the priesthood. Hence, shy of offering Holy Eucharist, they limited themselves to only breaking God's word. That discussion is a singular point of departure between Catholic and Protestant Christianity. Participation in the Eucharist is the offering of the Holy Mass by the priest and people together. We can consider the importance of the Mass. The sacred Mass has the penitential rite of forgiveness to begin with, then the Word of God and homily, breaking of the Word, and intercessory prayers, offering of gifts, consecration, and communion. The various dimensions of the Holy Mass make it a holistic worship. When we attend daily Mass, Sunday Mass, or any Mass at any time, we enter into a precious, wholesome worship, extremely integrated, beneficial, and spiritual. Initially, we approach the merciful God 
at the beginning of the mass and receive his forgiveness by acknowledging our unworthiness and sinfulness. Acknowledgement on the one hand and receiving his forgiveness is one of the beautiful purifying experience of any prayer. In our day-to-day -day life, asking for forgiveness by saying, I am sorry, and receiving the acceptance from our friends and neighbors is a great healing factor psychologically. After cleansing our heart and mind, we are prepared to receive his holy words, the word of God. In John 6, 66, Simon Peter said, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Every time we proclaim the word of God from the Old Testament and the New Testament, we stand instructed. If there is a homily that is breaking God's word, it's even better rooting our life with a world of context, cultural and social and economic and political, spiritual situations. Then we pray for the world, the church and ourselves. Jesus has taught us to pray for bread, kingdom and forgiveness in the prayer of our Father. It's a great moment of intercession, particularly of the community that has come together for the Eucharistic Mass. Prayers are offered to the Lord along with the precious gifts of bread and wine. The two symbols Jesus used to come to us in the Eucharist in the form of bread and drink. It's not out of place to cite here that innumerable brothers and sisters in the non-Catholic Christian churches miss the importance and elegance of these three triple gifts, namely prayers of intercession, bread as well as wine. Instead, they stop with only prayers, intercessions or otherwise. Will a day come when we can have an unity of worship as before the Reformation? We need to pray for that type of unity, an ecumenical unity daily in our lives. The next dimension in the Eucharistic service is consecration and communion. The consecration is priest-centered but people-oriented as do this in memory of me was given to the apostles in the last supper room. There is the mystical transformation of the holy bread and wine at the moment of consecration by the priest and affirmed by the faith of the people that at the end of the consecration, we adore the Lord by the words of the Apostle St. Thomas, my Lord and my God. And with the centurion, also we recite the deep, humble prayer, I am not worthy to come into my roof, but say only a word and your servant be healed. This is a peak moment at every Eucharist. And Jesus comes into us in every communion as he went to the house of the centurion or to the house of Zacchaeus. 
Catholic Christians experience a spiritual trance whenever they receive Jesus at Holy Communion. Before deathbed, many a Catholic Christian receives Jesus and enters into a samadhi or union with the divine and get into eternity. Receiving communion is a mystical moment in the life of every Christian. This leads us, brothers and sisters, to another dimension, namely the adoration of the Blessed Sacrament, benediction and visit to Jesus in the sacrament. It is the living presence of Jesus that we encounter in communion as well as veneration. The Anglican Christianity and a few churches believe in the presence of Jesus in the Eucharist like the Catholic Christians. Great miracles of physical healing, psychological peace and soul-filling serenity is experienced in all the centuries in the belief of the living presence of Jesus in the Eucharist. That accounts for many prayers and healings that we have experienced. Brothers and sisters, we need to receive the Lord worthily. The centurion has taught us the example of humility by saying, I am not worthy. Reconciliation with God and with one another, sacrament of confession, makes us definitely worthy. When we cannot go for confession, recitation of I confess to Almighty God makes us worthy enough to receive the Lord in communion. From what we have said, brothers and sisters above, we underline the fact of participation in the Eucharistic Mass and receiving of Holy Communion as a worthy practice that makes all of us genuinely Christian. We need to ask ourselves whether we participate in the Eucharist with worthy preparation. In some of our parishes, there are a sizable number of Catholic Christians who prepare themselves by reading God's word early enough, by acknowledging their sinfulness and by telling the Lord to come into their heart. There are thousands of Christians who sit in the adoration of Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament for an hour or more and go home with deep peace and serenity. I know a certain lady, recently given to the loss of her husband, goes to the church after the office hours and then only goes home filled with the support of the Lord. She, like many mothers, teach their children to encounter Jesus mystically. As human beings, we know that the eye of faith, the third eye as we call, even children can get into a delightful spiritual experience. I remember in my younger days, my parents taught me to visit the Blessed Sacrament. And I received not only my vocation, but the gift of health and perseverance even today. One of our saintly priests, Father Pedro Arupe, encountered the divine healer in the Eucharist in the premises of St. Lourdes, France, and later abandoned his medical career and embraced a missionary vocation of priesthood in Japan. Brothers and sisters, I invite you all to go over your life and see when and where 
Jesus in the Eucharist touched your life, assisted you and transformed your situation into a bright life. I invite you to look into your life when and where Jesus in the Eucharist touched your life, assisted you and transformed your situation into a bright life. Eucharist as a communion is a great union with the divine. We will, he will transform every one of us so as to say with St. Paul, it's not I who live, but Jesus lives in me. A Catholic Christian is a transformed Christ because of the Eucharist. May we reflect further on this mystery, particularly from these two dimensions of participating in the Mass and receiving Holy Communion and be united with the Lord and take each one of us into prayer along with our family members. Amen. Gracious God, we thank and praise you for this moment wherein you have enlightened us to really not only to believe in your presence, but also to taste you in Holy Communion as food and drink. Gracious Lord, give us that eye of faith to grow in appreciating the great gift of the Eucharist through which what you promised that you will be with us till the end of times will be fulfilled. Once again, we ask you, trusting in your powerful name, Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.